say about your team to follow up a 15 run loss, 15 run win? Or even. <laughs> yeah, our average runs given up over the last two games went down by 13. So, uh, yeah, I, I just told him, I was like, told you the other day, you're going to play games like we did on Sunday and be on the losing end, and sometimes you're going to be on the winning end. Over the course of a long season, those games happen, uh, and uh, fortunately, we won that one. Reed Chumley, pretty hot to plate right now, I'd say, at least against Marshall, right? Yeah, no doubt. And we need some guys to get hot, you know. It just takes, normally, when the whole team is together, it takes this many games to get in the flow of things. But since we've had so many different lineups and guys coming and going and hurt and not hurt and in and out of the lineup, it's going to take us a little bit longer this year to do that. So, and we're still not there yet because we have some guys that, as you know, JJ and Salve that haven't played in a while and still be in a little while yet. So, but when we get the whole team together, Somebody has to go from the field to the dugout with old Coach Mays, so they're making that decision pretty tough on me. Coach, with Reed, obviously coming from Houston Christian, obviously used to be Houston Baptist, they were kind of a giant killer uh, the last couple of years. Uh, getting him to, to come here, what, the, what all did that take? And, and uh, you know, what was it like? Uh, you know, how much did you know about him? Well, we knew, we knew he hit 392 down there. Sure, yeah. You just don't do that by accident. I mean, you can hit 300, a soft 300. You can't hit 392 yeah. by accident. So he's doing something well. And he's played in our stadium a bunch. He was in the draft league. And, oh, okay. Uh, I think he led the draft league at homers one year. And so he's had two summers in the draft league. So he's played in this park and knows what it's about. And, and he's starting to settle into the player that uh, we thought we were getting when we signed him. Is this the plan for your pitching today? Get X number of guys, X number of innings, and does that start playing into the league weekend series starting this weekend? Yeah, for sure. We needed these guys that pitched today. We needed them to pitch exactly the amount of innings they pitched, and it was good that we didn't have to throw Hageman and Hamilton Oliver. Those guys uh, both pitched twice, I think, against Ohio State, uh, so they needed a rest today to be fresh for this weekend. So uh, once again, the, the strategy just worked out like clockwork. After the way Sunday went, is it more maybe mentally, psychologically important to have a day like you all had today at the plate or on the mound, given who you all are playing this weekend? I, I mean, I think it's important just from a team aspect to bounce back from it. Because we talked about it in, the, in our team theater yesterday. This was a trap game and I asked somebody in the room to define the word trap, one of our players, and three of them tried and couldn't do it, but somebody finally said, the word trap means that you're trying to catch something by surprise when they are not expecting it. And uh, that's what this game was all about, a potential trap game, because we beat them pretty bad in Charleston, so we thought it was gonna be easy. We got Oklahoma coming up. They're in first place. Guys like to look ahead. Uh, we came off an emotional weekend with Ohio State. So all that lines up into this being a trap game. But since you talk about it ahead of time, then they don't get you off guard and they don't trap you. Most coaches just talk about trap games after the fact. But you can't avoid them if you let the guys know that there's the potential for that if you don't come out and play. And we really came out to play today. Coach, in terms of future decisions, lineups and otherwise, how interesting is uh, Aaron Jameson making things for you? I, he's been fun to watch, man. Yeah. He's, and and I, we haven't had, since I've been here, he's the only MHS guy we've had. So it's cool to see the fans gravitate toward him and see him having some success. And yeah, he's one of those guys that's making decisions difficult, you know, but it's just really cool for me to see him do what he's doing as the local kid. Yeah. That, uh, I just want to watch his career unfold and watch how much better he gets, and and hopefully in a in a couple of years, uh, you know, everybody in this town will have seen him uh, play for the Mountaineers for a while and watch his career unfold like I'm going to, and and be really proud of the local kid. The thing that I think is was really interesting with him was he committed to you guys before he'd even played a high school game, 
if I remember correctly. Probably so. So I mean, you had probably what seen them in, in, in middle school, or I mean, how? I mean, uh, what, what was that like having? Yeah, a, they uh, don't play middle school what? baseball much around here. But yeah, back in the day, before they changed the rules, we were getting commitments out of really, really young guys, and and we hadn't seen them play much. They'd never seen us play, but uh, that's that doesn't happen anymore. But but we knew he was super talented. And had, he's got great tools. Uh, he's got power. He's got speed. He can he can do it all. He just has to become a a great baseball player and that takes uh, longer than one season to do that so uh, he'll he'll keep developing over time but he's a tremendous worker tremendous worker even when he wasn't playing much early in the year he's always working so hard he's so coachable listens to everything literally everything that every coach tells him he listens to and he's just a pleasure to coach and pleasure to be around and I'm just so happy that he's here and proud of him. And with freshmen, a lot of times their knock is that they don't have a Division One ready body. Uh, he doesn't seem to be the case. He's a pretty big dude. How much of an advantage does that give him coming in here strong enough, big enough to compete at that level? Yeah, it's, I mean, you put a high school team next to a college team, that's what stands out is the physicality. But he's got a history of a lot of injuries, too. That, and he's never been able to get into the flow. It's been hamstrings and calves and elbows and, and the last – three or four weeks he's been healthy and I think we're seeing what he's capable of as a healthy player because he is so physical.